So how many of you have been in this situation? You've just invited your girlfriend or boyfriend over to meet your parents for the first time and they pull out the big book of embarrassing baby photos. Oh, look at how cute he used to be. Look at all the cake batter all over his face. Look at that silly hat. Isn't he cute? Wasn't he just the sweetest thing? What happened to you? If you were lucky enough not to find yourself single after that, you may have wanted to take that damn book outside and light it on fire or at least bury it somewhere that mom and dad can never find it. Okay, wait, but don't burn it yet. That photo album has a pedigree that connects it to this. Seriously. Okay, to be fair, that's just clickbait, but the truth is that the term album that we use when referring to this masterpiece of metal history is actually referring to the exact same thing as the photo albums that our parents used to fill with awkward photos of us. Let me explain. So back in 1877, when Edison made the very first audio recording, he recorded it onto a cylinder of tin foil. There were two physical needles, one for actually recording that actually cut into the foil and one for playback that followed in that cut and reproduced the sound. It was an amazing accomplishment for the time, but flimsy tin foil isn't a long-term solution, so they had to make some improvements. The foil was replaced with a hard wax, but the main problem was that they were still bulky. They were almost the size of a Coke can. Shortly after the wax cylinder was created, a man with a name who I'm not going to try to pronounce, he realized that discs were better and could fit a little bit more recording time. We are going to ignore most of the incremental improvements that were made between the two formats, but the most important thing to understand here is that both were only capable of holding a single recording per disc. At first, they weren't ever even recorded with both sides. If you wanted to have several songs, you had to have several discs laying around, or a box of cylinders. You know, wouldn't it be nice if you could put them all together in one place? Like in a book of some kind. Well, that's actually where the photo album comes in. Just like the photo album, which had existed since the 1850s, a record album would be a collection of recordings by the same artist that would be sold together. And it just so happens, I have some here. So these are the reason that we call albums, albums. There are a lot of different styles and formats of album that appeared and existed in the first half of the 20th century. It wasn't until 1948 that the LP appeared with enough recording time to put multiple songs onto a single disc. However, we had already adopted the term album to refer to a collection of songs from a single artist. That term continues to be used even today, the same way that the word season refers to a collection of episodes of a Netflix or Hulu series. So even when a band puts out something completely digital, you still get the term album. So let's take a quick look at these. Um, this is by no means the extent of the formats that these came in. It's only what I've been able to find while we're out thrifting. So first, let's check out this Jerome Kern collection. This is the oldest example of an album that I was able to find. It's a collection of recordings on Red Seal Records, which first premiered in 1902. These were made by RCA Victor as a specifically classical music label. They're big, they're heavy, they're made of shellac, and they're really, really fragile. This particular collection comes from 1938. Unfortunately, one of them is broken. But one of the interesting things is they had already become double-sided. The next one we have is this. It's an album, but it's more akin to those old Case Logic CD cases with the zipper that we used to carry in school that would scratch the crap out of every disc that we had. You remember those ones. This was designed to hold 10 7 inch records. In this case, they have a bunch of old 45s from RCA. In fact, there are a few Red Seal records in here too. Now, these weren't meant to hold any specific group of records, but rather 10 of whatever you wanted. And Whoever had this before me stuck a couple of old colored records in here too, which I've never seen, but that's kind of neat. Going forward a little in time, we have this. It's a collection of two LP discs with a pretty substantial booklet featuring a performance of the Barber of Seville. Now this collection is from 1960. By this point, the 33 and a third RPM LP had become the standard for music releases, but it's still interesting to see it presented in this old way of doing things. And finally, we have this guy. This is an album of three 7-inch 45s. We know it's an album because it says it on the top a couple of times. It's a collection of songs composed by various artists and played by the Paul Weston Orchestra. And they were all sold together and produced by Capitol Records in 1949. They put them all together in this nice little box, which got ruined by whoever put the price sticker on the front at the thrift store. I'd honestly be pretty pissed off if I was a collector. Everything else about this one is in really good shape. So now, for comparison, I present this, your standard CD. Grime time, in this case. All of the recordings fit onto a single side of one disc. However, now we understand why it's called an album, even though there's no album, no book. It's the collection of songs, not the disc. The word itself is very old and traces its origin all the way back to ancient Rome, but that is beyond the scope of this video. I hope that made sense. 
I kind of glossed over a lot of stuff in the interest of keeping this somewhat short. So that's really it for now. So I hope you found it interesting. I will see you next time.